Hi everyone, it's Dr. Romani. Welcome back to this YouTube channel on narcissism and narcissistic relationships and healing from these relationships. I'm going to come to a topic that I know I've circled around a lot, but it's this mistake that often gets people really kind of painted into a corner in narcissistic relationships, which is the mistake of thinking that someone being smart or intelligent is a virtue. Smart is not a virtue. So as I said, I have circled this topic before many times, but it, like I said, I think this very topic bears its own video because it matters a lot, especially when you're in the early phase of meeting or getting to know a new narcissistic person and it can inform the kinds of excuses you may make for them, excuses that may persist for years. So among the many charms that many narcissistic people bring into a new relationship are things like charm, charisma, confidence, being compelling. They may be successful. They may be really clever and sophisticated about the world and stylish or attractive. And they may be smart. Really, really smart. I don't know where and when it happened that we thought being smart was on the same level or perhaps even more important than being empathic, kind, or respectful. These things that I'm listing, empathy, kindness, respect, compassion, they typically involve an, our treatment of another person in general. Smart, frankly, is really about the self. But when we meet someone smart, we often treat them at the same level, maybe even higher, when, as those who actually possess real virtues, such as empathy and compassion. There are different kinds of smart, right? There's book smart, someone who is well-read, who's educated, who knows lots of stuff. And we learn that they're book smart because they share it, of course, lots and lots of times, which should be its own little red flag. Then there might be a person who has really high educational credentials, like a PhD or an MD or a law degree. And I, as someone with a PhD, I can say this, a person can have all kinds of fancy credentials, but not have an ounce of street smarts or be able to think themselves out of a paper bag. So let's go to street smarts, right? Street smarts are the capacity to sort of be able to go through the world in a smart and aware way, figuring out workarounds, being smart about how to get a deal done, how, how to get a problem fixed. It's a, a quick wit wittedness, thinking on your toes. They know the right person to find. It's a survival. It's a survival mentality that's typically honed by experience and sometimes by adversity. Then there are people who are skill smart. It may not look like book smart or educated smart, but they have a really well honed skill. They may be a really great mechanic or electrician or a smart chef, musician, financially smart, a smart person who knows how to make quilts. It's almost more of an expertise, but they're really, really good at the thing they know. And they're able often to communicate it and solve problems around it. And then there's just plain good old G-factor intelligence. That's its own big topic, right? Intelligence is being able to engage in novel problem solving, solve problems you've never seen before, to take a lot of information and integrate it, have skills and verbal abilities and nonverbal abilities. We can measure this, but there are also different kinds of intelligence. But then, you know what I mean, just generally, I'm not gonna get into a whole long thing about intelligence, that whole idea of someone who has a high IQ intelligence. Many narcissistic people think they're smart. They really think of themselves as smart. A study by Z Zayanowski and, and their colleagues showed that grandiose narcissistic people are higher in self-perceived intelligence. And they also think that intelligence is an important and valuable characteristic to have. But there is really very little data or convincing evidence that narcissistic people are actually, documentedly, more intelligent. But the book smart and credential smart in particular can be risky when it comes to getting stuck in narcissistic relationships. We can make the incorrect assumption that, well, someone's smart, so they're a safe person. The idea that a person who's smart is a good person, especially if they have, for example, a good job. Then they might even get bonus points if they have a family. Oh, you're smart and you have a family. It must be a good person. The mistake a person can make is they're smart. They must be a decent person. Why? Why is being smart making someone a decent person? Smart is smart. 
That's what it is. It's not kind. It's not warm. It's not agreeable or empathic. It can be. A person can be smart and be all those things, but it's not a guarantee. Smart may reflect time spent developing a skill intensely, studying a lot. It may reflect a need for admiration and the quest for knowledge they want to share with lots of people. It may reflect a competitive need to go to the best school and they get even more education and have a piece of status that might get them more admiration and validation. Smart may also be performative, talking about things using language that nobody understands and then by default people think that they're smart because nobody understands them. But smart at best is a parlor trick, a magic trick. It's not a virtue. But we're often as swoony as around smart people as we are when we're around really attractive people or really rich ones. And at least with the attractive or rich ones, we might already be thinking like, ooh, it could be narcissism by, we might be on our guard. But we're often not on our guard with really smart people. Listen, folks, I went to school for a long time and got all my little degrees, fancy degrees. I got to tell you, that process was actually quite selfish. I put my head down, I did the work, I focused on it, and not much else. Not even that much on other people. And in that process of getting all that education, I met some kind, wonderful people, and I met some awful, narcissistic people. And sometimes the smartest ones were the most narcissistic, in fact, quite often. And sometimes the smart ones were nice. But the smart and the nice did not necessarily go together. Many people have said that their partner or family members or even their friends' smarts was actually what confused them and often got them and kept them stuck. And even at times led them to think that maybe this person in their life is not narcissistic. How could they be? They're so smart. To which I would say, if they also have no empathy and they're entitled and mean and grandiose and selfish and arrogant and manipulative, then the smart, what is that? But the smart would throw people and not recognizing that the smart and the narcissism can and do go together. Like I said, sometimes it's a revelation for folks. And the smart can be its own risk in a relationship because you may believe that the narcissistic smart person has all the answers and you believe them. They may be better gaslighters because we assume that they're right because they're smart. So maybe they are right when they tell me that there's something wrong with me because they're smart. They may get more praise from the world. They may have more enablers and be more emboldened. The smart narcissistic folks get away with more, which can make them more harmful if you are in a relationship with them. Strangely, we do tend to give out get out of jail free cards to people if they are good at something. I know that people can say, a person could say mean things and be abrupt and have no empathy and be really entitled and abuses people in the workplace, but gosh, they're so smart. They're such a good fill in the blank. Lawyer, doctor, professor, business person, teacher, musician, chef, actor, philanthropist, whatever the hell they are. Okay, maybe they are good at that. You can be, in fact, quite often can be good at something and still be narcissistic. A person can be smart and do their smart things, but that doesn't mean that their abuse and their maltreatment doesn't sting. It sure as hell doesn't give them the right to abuse, and it's not an excuse for their harmful behavior. It's an important thing to remember as you navigate healing from trauma-bonded, and narcissistic relationships. Being smart is not a virtue. And it doesn't imply, if somebody's smart, it doesn't imply that you're reading the situation wrong. Smart and narcissistic quite often go together. Some survivors, especially those who grew up in narcissistic families, may have, been, may have heard or been told that they are dumb in a million different ways during their childhoods. And the impact on confidence when you grow up like that may mean that you held yourself back in terms of higher education or you didn't have that support or belief in yourselves. So when a person who has this history of being told they're dumb or not cultivating an intellect that didn't get cultivated and supported, when they meet someone smart who's also narcissistic, it can create some really terrible opportunities for abuse because the person who doesn't feel as smart may feel that they have no right 
to question the smart, narcissistic person. The fact is, yes, you do, because what they're doing is not okay. I don't care if someone's curing cancer, building a better smartphone, solving the origin of the universe, or cooking the perfect meal. Go do those things. Sure, those things help all of us. But to all the rest of us, the amazing things that someone can do doesn't qualify as a free pass for being cruel to other people. And if you work with someone who is like this, this ultra smart narcissist, it's radical acceptance and it may or may not be worth it to stick it out in the job. Some people can endure it if they feel that the so-called smart person is so smart or making such big contributions that they want to be a part of it. Others can't. Either way, you have to understand that smart and narcissistic can and do co-occur. And also remember that the narcissistic person does have to be the smartest person in the room. And they don't like it when there is someone smarter who shows up. It's a threat for them. And they will either mock or minimize the intelligence or skills or knowledge of this ostensibly smarter person. They might compete with them. They might try to show off or embarrass them about what they know in front of others. They might get into get passive aggressive digs into them, or they may just skulk off like a victim. Ultimately though, if you meet someone who's really smart, look alive, pay attention to the stuff that matters, the warmth, the empathy, the kindness, the mutuality of regard, their capacity to attune to you, the psychological safety you feel with them, patience. That's the stuff that matters. If they happen to be smart to boot, then awesome, great. But be careful to not let your sense of their smartness be a reason that you second guess yourself. And trust me, they might say things like, well, I went to Yale or I have a business, so I have the family finances figured out. What do you know about it if you don't know anything about money? Or I work at some fancy schmancy job, so obviously I will know more about this than you. It's easy to succumb when it's being pitched that way, especially if you feel insecure about what you know, but don't. I have been thinking about this video for a very long time, actually. And then someone pointed out to me a news article about someone that everyone publicly thought was super smart and turned out to be, big surprise, a world-class a-hole. And that ended up starting this public debate between the folks that said they no longer wanted to get advice from this smart person and the people who defended this person. My thought as I watched this debate sort of unfold is that, listen, you want to learn from this person, learn from this person if what they're saying is actually well-founded and it's helping you. But always be willing to question it and don't let that person's need to use big obtuse words leaving you feeling as though you don't know anything. And remember that maybe even if someone's offering some great so-called wisdom, take their wisdom and then run. They don't need to be your friend but don't excuse their bad behavior either. Remember those multiple truths I always talk about. It's all about the multiple truths. Get the knowledge, but expect little else. And most importantly, don't give the best of yourself to them. And listen, I'm not naive. I can sit here and say smart is not a virtue, but depending on the nature of the smarts and what they have done with those smarts, Smart is attractive and it is compelling. We may view it with some admiration, view with admiration the amount of time that went into their education or into developing their accomplishments. So I absolutely can see how people are drawn to it, admire it, and even value it. But by itself, smart is not a virtue and it is definitely not a rationale nor a justification for abuse. And if their smarts or intellect or just knowing a lot about something leaves you doubting yourself from the jump from when you first meet them, saying stuff to yourself like, well, I hope I can keep up, then there's a power and balance there, which is risky. So if they do manipulate or gaslight, you're already at a disadvantage. And no, we don't need to understand why they're behaving badly just because they're smart, we, they, they're behaving badly. That's it. And that, that's where the sentence ends. You can outsmart this smart narcissist by remembering what qualifies as toxic behavior 
and in fact, getting what you need to know from them and getting out and take care of you. Hope that helps and thanks again.